Welcome back to our travels. In the last episode, my daughter Caroline and I hit the trail on a father-daughter adventure into the backcountry of Utah. After exploring a few of our favorite canyons and finding some incredible petroglyphs along the way, we attempted to climb the pass and make our way to a new region. And that is where we're picking up the story today. Slowly climbing a trail that was getting deeper and deeper with icy sugar snow. It looks like our plans are about to get rearranged. Come on, baby. Come on, Silver, you got this. Come on, girl. clear we're not gonna be getting over the mountain on this trail so I'm just trying to find a place to get the trailer turned around but uh, yeah you can see there's old tracks in the snow and one by one by one other vehicles have turned around and so what's busted in the snow is getting less and less helpful so we're gonna try and stop while we're ahead if we can find a spot to turn around it's still fun. It's still fun. There it is. Hopefully we can turn around. Right up here. Thankfully we made it to a large campsite before the snow got too deep and the canyon too steep. This really wasn't a surprise since this trail has stopped our travels before when we've attempted to drive it too soon in the season. After a bit of backtracking, we activated plan B and put some air in the tires to try a paved route over the pass and hopefully down to some lower elevations for the next leg of our journey. We've made it to some lower altitude areas. I was really hoping that this was going to be an improvement. And it is to some degree, but I uh, just wanted to stop here and air down as much as possible because <laughs> somebody had a little bit of trouble here. Now, you can see I was straddling that, so I'm not leaving ruts, but it's still slick from time to time, so 
I want to be ready, especially if it's on a downhill with a trailer. You can get in trouble real quick out here um, on some of these grease patches, so I just want to be 100% ready. But thankfully, it has dried out significantly since whoever that was went through. So uh, we're going to give it a try. Losing daylight, got a hungry little girl in here, so try and find camp just as quick as possible. But look behind me here. Is that not spectacular? It's beautiful evening. day arriving late at a blustery cold camp so last night went so well we're gonna cheat again mm -hmm. in here watching some fail army fixing a cook up what we got lasagna mm. with meat sauce we'll save the fancy meals for nicer weather yeah <laughs> and guys last night i actually lost a tooth while watching our movie that's right <laughs> i lost uh, one right here next to my canine let's see memorable camping trip right here we're already hitting all the marks oh and as a safety note got the window cracked got the vent on don't cook inside without some ventilation let's do it dive in it is hot. that's good not bad for a 10 year old mountain house no longer than that that might be 12 years old. All right. Good morning, folks. Glorious, calm, peaceful, but cold morning. We're actually camped on the edge of a dry wash. And usually I, I avoid dry washes, but the weather was clear. 0% chance of rain for the next several days. The campsite that I wanted to camp at, which is right up on that knoll right there, it was so muddy. I was going to destroy it pulling in there and I found this sandy gravelly wash with some solid rock and I thought it's a better option overall. There's actually something really cool right down here on the other end that I'll show you here in just a minute but first let's get some breakfast going. So I promised you a lot of this season is going to be talking about the real life stuff. We're sometimes a little embarrassed by our messes, but this is just real life right here. This is after a night, movie night, cooking inside, and a 10 year old daughter and ensuing chaos. Now I've had this trailer for, I guess it's been about five or six months now. And so we've finally gotten into a routine about where everything goes. But when stuff changes and all of a sudden we're running with as a solo or father, daughter, or back to a family, things move around. So it takes a couple of days to get figured out. I've got this dialed in. It looks bad right now, but I'll show you what it looks like once we get 
reorganized. Now this spot that we've been working on organizing is our pots and pans. If you remember when we borrowed the first Voyager from Marty and Stacy, we had to go to Walmart to buy some pots and pans because we forgot to bring some with us. So what we've done temporarily is we have our pots and pans with these little microfiber cloths stacked between them so they don't scratch the non-stick stuff. But what I'm going to do is actually make an organizer in here so you can grab any pot without having to pull the whole nested stack out and deal with all the cloths and stuff. We haven't shown that a lot because it's, you know, not aesthetically pleasing. I did find out though that the oven can stay assembled and fit right up here on top of this additional cutting board. But I, you know, visually, I just want to make it look so nice. So keep an eye out for that. Hopefully we get that knocked out in this season. Now we press coffee. Mmm, I need my coffee. Delicious. I know I've just got to say it. This is the best coffee we've ever had. We've tried a lot. It took years to find one that we were willing to put our own name on, but Scott, over there in Tennessee. Thank you so much for that email about a year ago, I guess. You knocked it out of the park. Scott is actually in Columbia right now. He actually goes and tours the farms. He doesn't just bulk order wholesale beans like some of the other companies. He's all about hands-on, making sure that it's grown right, making sure that the vibe is right, and people are being treated right, and making sure that the source is, uh, is pure. So uh, thank you for all your hard work. And also thank you for sending me some pictures of the grinder, our grinder down there in Columbia. That's so, so cool, man. Maybe the roof will never leak. Maybe the money will never run dry. Well, honey, I won't give a damn. If it's always you and I Baby, if it's you and me We can weather all sorts of weather Let the storms come and we'll keep dancing Let's try the omelet first. Let's see, did Dad make it right? That's really good. good 
the best. <laughs> the best. It's you and me. We can weather all souls. Weather. Oh man. Light, crispy, homegrown. Thanks, Tim, for the eggs. You're the man. Where the storms come and we'll keep dancing. As long as we're together. All right, got camp all cleaned up. Everything takes twice as long when I don't have my better half taking care of the cooking where I can film, so. We don't get in a rush when it's just me or me and Caroline, but I want to show you what the cabin's supposed to look like before it gets lived in. So this is the baby bed area if you haven't seen it yet in some of the other videos. So that's a crib sized mattress that fits here. So Abigail sleeps here. But when it's just me or me and Caroline, we use it to stow our games, cook some food, all that kind of stuff. Currently we got squishmallows keeping guard over it all. We got our little pop-up table for games and whatnot. And then an assortment of blankets and stuff. Up here, we've got the charge station. And I would love to have some like fake plants and stuff to make this look good. But right now it's just functional. So we got our drum batteries being charged over there. Camera battery chargers all set and ready. Caroline's got our watch all charged up here. Oh, and then up top we got our tablet holder for movie night. And then I put a camera mount so the camera can mount out of the way doesn't get damaged we got our 360 camera if we want to kind of like talk about what's going on inside all at the same time pretty cool spot and we're not using the tent upstairs but what i found is just having this hatch area the depth gives you this much more head space which if you're tall like me is fantastic we're in love There might be several detours on the way. Good one. Satisfying, right? Yes. <laughs> Squirrel. I don't know if you recognize this place yet or not. Huh? It's actually Chris Shantz that put me onto this. <gasps> Isn't that awesome? Uh huh. After a peaceful morning soaking up sunshine, devouring tasty omelets with biscuits, Go. and exploring the edge of the small canyon, we decided it was the perfect time to fire up another set of overland rigs and experience some adventure on a whole new scale. Hear the commotion, and that's okay. We're in motion, I can feel the sway. There's nothing to fear, my friend, oh no. It's the natural Colorado And when the ground is shaking You thunder roar you Wouldn't worry It's just a storm
While these may look like toys, these RC rigs are already teaching Caroline some important lessons about picking lines, seeing the need for good approach and departure angles, as well as helping her understand how different terrain can affect traction. And true, the main goal here is to have fun with her dad, but it won't be long before she's behind the steering wheel and putting all these principles into play from the driver's seat. All right, not gonna lie, that was pretty cool. Uh huh, for sure. I think that's a new new addiction. It's helping you understand the lines and stuff a little bit too, isn't it? Uh huh. It's so funny because mine is not very stable, so it could like <laughs> <laughs> a little top heavy. Yeah. All right, let's get on the real trail now. High five. No one likes to admit they're wrong. But I'm saying this to the benefit of everyone watching. I'm driving along and I hear my chain dangling. Dinkle, dinkle, dinkle. And it happens from time to time, especially when there's a crest in the trail or a dip. You hear them jingle. But this was constant. I'm like, that's not right. Now, I am very meticulous about hooking up my trailer. I double check everything, I take my time, I do a walk around, I check my brakes, I do all those things, check my lights. But what I did not do this time was visually ensure what I was connecting my emergency chains to. Let me show you. You see that? That right there, my friends, is the pin that holds the pin that holds this whole hitch to the bumper. That is what I connected to. I don't know. I mean, you, you try to be as careful as possible. And then the one little thing, the one little thing that you don't, that you don't check, that you don't double check, can be a trip ender. Ah, oh, man. Granted, the other safety chain would have probably held it, but what if I'd been on the road? Gives you a sick feeling right down here in the gut of your stomach. All right, let's fix this right. I don't even know how that happened. I don't even know how. I got so far off. That's scary stuff. <sighs> a nice friendly reminder, thank you, to double check. No matter how many times you've done something. Visually check. Don't assume. Just because the chain went into the hole where you thought it was supposed to go. <sighs> Take this as a lesson. Okay. <laughs> uh, you need to spin around the right way too. Because if that door comes open, <laughs> and we're not going fast, but that would be bad.
so this is a railroad bed that they were making years ago and they'd gotten I think like 70% of it done graded with drains like this and then they canceled the project so you get to see a lot of these little hints of where they came through here and there's also a gypsum mine in this area but uh, we haven't found it yet <laughs> Oh, hey, a stick. Oh, <laughs> Did you record that? <laughs> oh, look. A oh, rock. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you need to show me that after, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, you know, sometimes you just gotta camp or you can find a spot. I guess this spot will just have to do. It's rough, y'all. It's rough. All right, we're gonna cook dinner tonight. Something hearty and delicious as opposed to just huddling inside, although we do have a good breeze and it's already nippy, but we need to eat some food that we brought. So let's look in the fridge and see what we got. Already retreated, huh? Huh? Already retreated? Yeah, I'm pooped. <laughs> Getting that digital time in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's about up. So let's get some dinner going. Yeah. Okay. And here's a quick little hack that we've been using for our chairs. We leave them assembled, except for these, and they're just ready. They're just ready. I mean, it's space you're not using while you're running down the road, so why not? And this table was actually bought as a kit for something I'm doing with the Beast. Very slow build out, but it looks so good out here. I'll put a link down there. get our ingredients cooked up first. Well, it's satisfying and gross at the same time. <laughs>
now. I was like putting my soul into that. <laughs> You know what we didn't get? What? Mozzarella cheese. Did we not get cheese at all? No, well we have sharp cheddar. Oh, epic fail. This was looking so good. It's okay. Ah. We can make it work. Man, I can't believe I forgot the mozzarella. Thankfully we do have some sharp cheddar, which is not pizza cheese, but it'll hold it all together, I guess. So I made Carolina calzone. I'm gonna go with a traditional pizza just because the roll wasn't big enough to get like a full piece. So I just kind of <laughs> patchworked the little pieces and stuff and finished this out. But hey, when life doesn't give you mozzarella, you just make calzones. That's how the saying goes, right? It is cold up here. This wind is starting to gust. Caroline has retreated wisely. So I'm gonna get her food wrapped up. Get mine cooked up and then go huddle inside. Better than no cheese at all. Alright, I'm the truth. Did we? Yes, we did. Look at that. Oh, baby, baby. Now for my hot mess. Be nice to sit out here, but it is too cold. Mm. It's hot. Okay. Watch out. I'm coming in. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, mine's still got a ways to go. The wind's been just whipping and gusting and... Sometimes it makes it a little hard to get that oven up to temperature when that happens. So probably got about another 10 minutes there, but let's let Caroline eat. But I want to get her reaction to see if this is uh, any good at all. All right, girl, let's see what you think. Yeah, I gotta get some ingredients in there. Mmm, bread. <laughs> bread. <laughs> it's delicious crust. That's so good. Is it good? Yeah. All right, you take a few more bites, get into it, and I'll uh, revisit you here in a minute. Okay. All right, just a couple more minutes left on that pizza. But you might be wondering, how is it that this trailer handles the cold like it does? And this one has been outfitted with their Four Seasons strategy i'll show you just a couple of things here real quick before i shut it all down for the night but uh the big thing is the water tank has 36 gallons of water in it so you want to get that thing mostly full as best as possible during cold weather because if you can get it warm it's got a lot of mass it can retain a lot of heat as opposed to a tank that's almost empty so that's step number one but there are tank heaters underneath it so you turn those on and I think they've tested it down to about 14 degrees. We're continuing to push that limit just to see what we can do. And um, it does a phenomenal job keeping everything on the tank side of things nice and happy. The big question is though, even if your tanks are okay, what about the plumbing? The plumbing's always the weak part, you know, where it gets to the faucets and things like that. So what they've done is they've actually routed ductwork from the Truma heater all the way back here to the utility area underneath the sink. And this is where the electronics and things like that live as well. But there's actually ductwork in here, as well as a thermostat. So you can look on the Red Arc Red Vision system and see what your temperatures are. And so far, we've been down to about 12, I think. It's still doing good. So uh, yeah, take a look. So see, this is one of the ductworks that comes underneath the trailer and up into here. This is some additional insulation that they've gotten so that this chain of cables doesn't lie directly on the deck and risk getting frozen up so they've got some isolation there just makes just a huge huge difference so when it is stupid cold i'll actually turn the furnace on and that's nice because it preheats the cabin but it keeps all this space nice toasty and free flowing because the last thing you want it's frozen lines when you're out camping. All right. 
dinner served. I think that'll do. Wallet is supposed to do that? Trayvax. Got a built in bottle opener. I actually sell these in our store. I love this thing so much. I added it to the store. Let's try lso.link forward slash Trayvax. Yeah. All right. So, fell on me? Yeah. <laughs> That's not safe. <laughs> While our journey still has quite a few more miles to go, Today, we're going to put the cameras away and just enjoy some undistracted time together while exploring whatever trails look interesting. Oh, and speaking of cameras, Caroline did an awesome job filming some of this adventure, along with a lot of the drone footage you've seen as well. She continues to amaze me with her creativity, insight, and skills, which are quite impressive for a 10-year-old who still is very much a kid at heart. Caroline and I are so glad you could ride along with us on this part of our father-daughter adventure. We'll see you again on the next video. But until then, remember to stay curious and leave it better than you found it.